public, what we would like to do is start these conversations to build relationships that have been absent in, in history. That's um, because we were stuck, our uh, people were separated from the main street by the government. We were put into, on reservations, we were put into residential schools. So we were kept out of the out of the general public's eyes. And what we want to do is come out of that that place of separation and, and rebuild relationships that we were trying to build at the time of first contact and mutual respect and understanding.
on the Human Rights Code and Disabilities in 2007. Initial local issues that were identified include dignity, participation, and access, timely, no-cost resolutions of rights issues, public education on human rights laws, community activists passing the torch. <laughs> We recently developed an assessment tool for AODA, uh, our customer service standard. We have advised on livable and inclusive community projects, currently with an, an awareness and commitment to visible housing. Visible housing. The goal of the Disability Human Rights Group is to be a model for an inclusive <coughs> process and to develop new ways to approach disability and human rights issues that will include all community members and improve the quality of life for all. Sometimes we felt that's hard work. And I still have a deep interest in helping myself and other people with disabilities to find their place in the community and to be an important part of it, to have a voice and to have a place where they can network with other people with similar problems so that uh, uh, they can have friends and just feel fully accepted and a member of our society. Yeah, and I've been involved pretty well right from the beginning of, of the group. But, uh, but I stay involved because I, I know of no other organization that is looking at these issues in this way and, and taking the time to, to do a, a solid policy analysis around uh, these concerns for uh, people with the lived experience of, of disabilities or, or poverty or whatever that lived experience is. Whether or not this place will be her home. So, like, 
What are you? Canadian. No, no really. What are you? Um, I'm mixed. Oh, wow, you're mixed. Are you like the other half Asian in our school? You guys all look the same. You must be sisters. So, like, but you don't, you don't look, look mixed. mixed. But I am. I'm sorry I don't fit your perception of what a mixed girl should look like. I guess I lost the letter you sent me listing the requirements for looking mixed. Number one, gorgeous tan skin, but not too tan so that you'll see me as a threat. Number two, big beautiful eyes, light green, dark blue, not brown, something exotic. Exotic. Exotic eyes. Exotic food. Exotic culture. Exotic language. Exotic, 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 exotic exhausted is, is what we really are. What are you? We are humans. Citizens, students, friends, daughters, sons, sisters, brothers, bubble tea chuggers. We are a long list of Starbucks lovers. But by that confused look on your face, this isn't the answer you were looking for when you asked. After 16 years of living in North America, our grandmother still compliments us on our English. Please, Grandma. <laughs> we are too much of this side for that side, too much of that side for this side. Why do we have to pick sides? We are stuck in the middle. Always too much of one side for the other. Mixed people can feel like they are everything and nothing at the exact same time. So next time you want to ask, what are you? Instead, you could try asking, who are you? Or maybe even, how are you? <laughs>